there friends, so today I am going to show you how I made these awesome little dragon horns. The pattern is from Kamiwi Cosplay's horn pattern and I added my own little things <laughs> to it so I will show you how I do that. So let's just go ahead and hop right into the video. So after printing the patterns, I trace them onto some graph paper so that I always have a master pattern. This definitely saves paper. I will be laminating them as well so that I always just, I have, I'm, I'm going to make these horns again. I already know it. So I want to make sure that I have a reusable pattern. So I plop the patterns onto some four millimeter foam from Coscom Cosplay Supplies. I pin the pattern to the foam to keep them from sliding around when I trace them. For tracing, I make sure to also mark all of the registration lines. The registration lines helps when gluing the parts together to make sure that they're all even and where they're supposed to be. Similar to how notches are on sewing patterns, each pattern also has numbers and marks that distinguish how you're supposed to hold the blade so that they go together perfectly. Next, I unpin the pattern from the foam and I make sure to extend those registration marks past the cutting line. Now it's time to cut them out! Burr, burr, burr. I'm sorry, I'm very sorry. So I make sure that my blade is sharp. I slowly cut along the cutting lines. As you can see, I'm holding my blade at an angle to bevel the edges. And then I just cut out all the pieces. So now I just mirror the pattern for the other side, pin it and cut it and wow they're all cut out and stuff yay. <laughs> Next I just glue all of the pieces together matching registration marks. I didn't really get good footage of this so I'm just stealing footage from a twitch stream where I glued all these together. Next I sand down the seams to blend them together. I start with a 160 grit bit I think, I, I don't remember, and then I smoothen it out with a 240 bit. After sanding, I fill the seams with some quick seal and that's it for the base. So now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut a little no the little, 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 little nubs off and I'm gonna put it on the horn, like here, to kind of like build it up a little bit more. Then I'm gonna put like these ridge things on and you'll see, you'll see it's gonna be really cool. Also, if you ever see me like with a beanie on, it's because I don't want the world to know that I didn't put on eyebrows today. So now I'm just cutting the little, the little, little, little nubs off. I also trim the ends of each one and I taper them. This is to create a gradual increase in thickness on each piece, makes it look more natural than just having it suddenly thick. Then I just glue it onto the front of the horn. Now it's time to tape! So with these now glued on, I tape the horns to create a pattern for some super cool scaly plate looking things. So I just draw on the pattern. I tend to pull my projects toward me until I'm like hunched over like a little crafting goblin who doesn't want you to take their favorite activity. Then I cut out the scale things out of 2mm foam. Next I pin all the plates to the horn to make sure that they fit and that they look nice. And I really like the way that this is turning out. It looks really good. Enter Bean having an existential crisis. Why does she look like every photo of Bigfoot available? <laughs> So I start gluing them from the top down until the whole thing is covered, and I make sure to trim the edges as needed. I then use my 240 bit on my rotary tool to blend in the edges. Mm -hmm. 
So this next part is really toxic. Please make sure to do this in a well ventilated area and wear a respirator. I have my craft room windows open and I had a respirator on. I know I say this every time, but I'm serious. Foam will release toxic smoke when you burn it. So you don't want to be inhaling that. So I'm just using my soldering iron to burn in some texture and cracks into the edges of the plates, scales, things. I'm using a shiny new thin tip and oh, it turned out so well. I love the way it looks. Taylor, what are you doing? No one can see what you're doing because you have to focus the camera. Ah yes, the floor. How I take such advantage of you. You get walked on all day. But damn, I appreciate windows way more. It's not much, but it really brings them to life, makes it more organic. Next, I take my heat gun and I blast the edges to open up the details that I just burned in. And I also curl the edges a little bit to make them stand out a little bit more. And then the foam will just stay like that because foam is wonderful. So now it's time to Plasti Dip. So I also bought the broken capped Plasti Dip. It was the only one that was broken and no one wanted it and I knew no one else would buy it and then it would just end up in a landfill. I bought the broken one and it even smells like normal unbroken Plasti Dip. I know, I compared it to my other ones. It smelled the, that, the exact same. Fun fact, Plasti Dip actually used to follow me on Instagram and then they unfollowed me <laughs> once they realized that like I post weird shit. They were like, we don't want to follow this person. <laughs> so since I need to be careful and not get paint all over everything in my house since we're gonna sell it at some point I take it outside to spray I do two layers and I stick a wire through the base of the horn just to help hold it so I don't get plastic dip all over my hands because I do that a lot but first this I did this far longer than I probably needed to <laughs> don't all normal people have horns just hanging from their ceilings beneath a little tree so after doing a coat, or two coats I guess, of Plasti Dip, I went ahead and hand painted the horns white for the base. Horns are the one and only time- Horns are the one and only time um, that I encourage lots of paint streaks because as you can see, I have lots and lots of fun brush strokes. Hopefully when I spray on the color that these horns will be, it will stick in the ridges and stuff and bring out more of that texture. Because I wasn't really clear there, I was distracted by my fiance doing whatever that was. <laughs> the brush strokes made a lot of texture, which is exactly what I was going for. So now I'm just airbrushing Folk Arts Color Shift paint in red flash. I do a few layers of this until it's completely covered. Next, I mix a bit of black paint in with a red flash and I use that for some shading. I then mix up a bit of white and red flash in a separate bottle and then I use that for highlighting such as the areas that pop out the most, like the tops of the plates and the edges. Can you see that color shift though? Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. I wanna play with all their colors. They have a huge palette of these color shifting and I'm like, ooh, I need everyone. Next, I take a bit of water and some black paint, mix it up and I start applying it to the cracks with a thin brush and I wipe away any excess, leaving it in the cracks. And that's it for painting and everything. I don't seal these because I don't know how adding a seal would reflect the color flash. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. Maybe I'll test the color flash with a sealer over it another day. I just haven't done that yet, but yeah. <laughs> There's a hair stuck in this. I think that's literally a Sebastian hair and it's like stuck in the paint. Anyway, so to e to e-tatch, to e-tatch, to attach the horns, I just took some wire and I shoved it through one side and came out the other side of the horn and I just wrapped it around this thick headband and I glued 
the wire to the headband to keep it from slipping around and stuff. I should also put a piece of foam here to close it off. So yeah, there's a bajillion ways that you can attach horns to a headband or to a wig. This is just my favorite method, is just to wire it right to the headband. Just put them on like so. Wow. Happy holidays, everyone. Oh, what's this? What's this I have in my hand right here? So from now until December 31st, or until the stickers run out, if you sign up to my Patreon in the $5 tier and up, I'll send you a sticker. And it's this sticker right here. It's me eating a sweet roll in my Daedric armor. <laughs> and my friend who designed this is finally on the social medias. She goes by Ninja Ruki, and she's so talented and wonderful. And thank you so much for designing this sticker. But <laughs> thank you so much to my patrons, Adam Hunt, Anime Crush, Arnold Ma, Blue Panda, Brian, Catastrophe Kitten, David Rosenbaum, Eric, Helvigan, Jenny Lynn, Jim W, Kalika Kaiser, Logan Don Carlos, Malice Merton, Nathan M, Ninja Ruki, Nanama, Robert Gallardo, Rusty Shackleford, Sakura, and Valdemir. Thank you guys so much. Have a super awesome rest of the day, and I will see you guys next week. Bye, Sebastian. Stop chewing on my laptop. You're so cute. Would you little bit? Do not step on my laptop. <gasps> Do not step on the power button. <gasps> He's so cute.